Hello! So, today I'm going to show you a software add-on for Microsoft Flight Simulator on the PC that you didn't know you needed, and it's completely free, and I built it. So, it's called Transmitter. I'll explain what it's for before I actually show you it. So, ever since, since Flight Simulator 2020 arrived, there's been no good way of showing yourself and your friends on a decent map to see where each other are while you are flying along together. So obviously there is a map inside the game, but it's not very good. So the question becomes, how can we solve that problem? So shortly after 2020, or Flight Simulator 2020 arrived, I created a little program called Transmitter. So what it does, it connects to the simulator via the Sim Connect protocol and it reports your position and your identity that you give it up to the internet. So you point it towards a server on the internet and Virtual Flight Online has a server. That's the one I've created. And then from that server, you can fetch the positions that everybody else is live. And you can do that in little nav map, but you can also do it in a web browser. And that's what I'm gonna show you this evening. So, first things first then, we're going to jump over to transmitter.virtualflight.online and within the website you can see I can download the free transmitter client. So I'm going to click on the button and that takes me over to GitHub because the whole thing is open source. I am giving away how it was built. So then I'm going to download the transmitter installer and that will put it in my downloads folder and then I'm going to go and run the installer and Windows will complain about security because it's not a licensed Windows program for the, from the store so I'm just going to say more info and run anyway and then we're just going to say yes and it will ask you where you want to install it so we'll say in the program files folder go next install and then launch transmitter so it will pop up and the first thing it's going to say to me is it looks like you haven't changed your call sign or name yet. So we'll say OK. So there's Transmitter. We can get rid of everything else out of the way now. So down the left hand side, it can handle having multiple servers. So you might have different communities that you're a part of that have their own server. So this will allow you to add multiple communities. But it comes out of the box with all the settings for Virtual Flight Online already plugged in. So all we need to do is fill in our call sign. So I'm going to go for Golf Juliet Bravo Echo Kilo. You can put anything you like in the text box. And then pilot name, I'm going to put my name in. So Jonathan Beckett. And that's it. I just click connect. So if I disconnect, you'll notice you can choose what server you're using in the simulator. This is purely to tell other people. So if they're looking for you to do multiplayer, they can make sure they're on the same server you are on to see each other. Okay, so connect. And that's it. We can leave it running. It says how long you've been connected for down in the bottom corner, just for a bit of fun. And we'll minimize it. So how can we use what it's doing? If we go over to Little Nav Map, you can see I've got a little aeroplane, yellow aeroplane as per normal in Little Nav Map, that's slowly trudging its way across the map. And I'm the only person that can see that yellow aeroplane. I can't see anybody else's aeroplanes in the same way. So what we can do is go to Tools, Options, and Online Flying. And then we can select Custom. This is all documented, by the way, in the website. I'll show you in a moment. We select Custom, and we select the location of a WhatsApp file URL. So this is a data feed from the internet made by the people using Transmitter. And we can test it to make sure it works. And we've said every five seconds, and it must be in IVAO format. OK, and then we apply that and just say OK. And then in Transmitter, we just click on the little red aeroplane icon. And you'll see straight away who I am broadcasting as from Transmitter is appearing. And every five seconds, it will fetch it again. The trick being that everyone using Transmitter on the same server will appear in the same way. Okay, so if I hover the mouse over that little aeroplane, you can see the model of aeroplane, 
where it is, you know, the speed it's doing, the altitude it's at, and so on. And that will update every five seconds because that's what we've told little NavMap to do. And that's what I originally wrote purely for little NavMap. So that's all Transmitter used to work with. I've improved it. Okay, so let's minimize little NavMap out of the way. So we've got Transmitter running and it's talking to Flight Simulator via the SIM Connect interface and it's broadcasting who I am and where I am up to the internet. If we now go to the website, so we'll go rewind back out of here back to the Virtual Flight Online Transmitter website at transmitter.virtualflight.online. We've got two screens here. I'm going to show you the status screen first. So if I pop that open, I can see immediately a table of people that are using Transmitter right now and a map that I can drag around with the mouse and I can zoom in and out and I can click on people on the map and it will tell me all about them. So there's me, look, I'm flying across the south of England in the Carinado um, 210 Turbo and yeah, so there we go. I can zoom in with the mouse wheel so I can zoom in and see myself and this will update every 30 seconds. It's just updated itself, look, so it just resets itself. And if we don't look down at the table below, it shows you the information about altitude, heading, indicated airspeed, ground speed, last landing rate. So the last time you touch the ground, the rate you did so, which is quite good fun. If you're doing a group flight, you can all look at each other's landing rates as you land. Okay, so that's the status page, quite straightforward. The next thing I built, which I've only just done very recently, is the interactive radar page. So if we go and pop that one open in another tab in the browser we've now got a radar on the screen that updates every five seconds so we can zoom right in on our airplane and when we zoom in far enough labels appear okay so every five seconds it changes we can move the labels and it remembers so if there's a whole group of you you might want to drag the labels around to keep them out of each other's way usually it doesn't become too much of a problem because you can zoom as well remember with the mouse wheel it has a raft of options down the side of the screen. So obviously we can zoom in and out. We can press the home button, which will show us the world. We can press the center on aircraft button, which will put everybody that's broadcasting within the screen. We can press the table button, which makes a table which is draggable, which lists everybody that's transmitting and it becomes scrollable if it gets too big. We can also drag this toolbar around. If I click on myself on this table, it will zoom in on me. If I click on my aeroplane here, it will show me the data on my aeroplane. If I click on the grid, I'll just zoom out a bit. So if I click on the grid, we get a longitude latitude grid on the map. And it changes representation as you zoom in and out to show more or less squares. And you'll notice also, so at the moment it's updating every five seconds. There's a rather clever trick here. So I'll zoom right in so we get to see it. So you can see it's stuttering as it updates. If we click the little running man icon, it will do smooth updates. So on the next update, it figures out the speed you were going and the direction you were going, and it starts what's called interpolating your position. So it's smoothing out your journey across the map. So if there's a whole group of you and you're zoomed in on, say, the runway for ATC, for example, gives them a much nicer idea. Obviously, you can turn that back off if you don't want that on, but that's it's just, it's just a trick it's got up its sleeve. OK, so we can see we can see the whole world like this and we can see anybody else that's using transmitters. So if I was to zoom out, we can see people appear as a dot if they're not going anywhere yet. But if we go and zoom in, say, on the San Francisco Bay here, this, this would be a good example. There's a tile button here. This will change the map. So at the moment, I'm showing a dark view, which kind of looks like a radar display. If I click it, it will go to satellite. If I click it, if I zoom in, I can keep zooming in. This will go keep going forever and a day and become more and more detailed. And obviously, you can zoom back out. So we've got satellite. We've also got a dark mode. We've got light mode. And we've got topographic. Okay, 
and then no map and then back to what I, what I call the radar map but it's just a dark view really so again we don't have to scroll around look we can just go and click the person and it will take us straight to them we can go full screen as well so we got rid of the browser edges so you could leave this on the screen to one side while you're on a group flight for example so another couple of things I've added very recently so while you're flying along, you might want to think, oh, I wonder how long it's going to be or what direction I have to fly to get over to Leeds, for example, from here. If I hold the right mouse button down and drag, I get a line extended with the bearing and distance in the box. And as soon as I let go, it goes away. So I can do that anywhere on the aeroplane. So I can be measuring distances between things. And you could measure from other places to other places. It really doesn't matter. The other thing you can do is hold the shift key on on the keyboard, hold the right mouse button down and it will draw a range ring around you while you are holding them down. As soon as you let go of the right mouse button, it disappears. Okay, so they're kind of useful things for during a group flight. So there you go, that's the radar display. So just to give you an inkling of what this might look like if it was a really, really busy session and there were hundreds of people online, because the major change here is I've made transmitter work properly with hundreds of people at once. So I'm going to inject for test purposes 50 aeroplanes within a hundred or a few hundred miles of us. So I'm going to do it now. So on the next update to draw, here they come. So those are not real aeroplanes. I've just so they're not going to animate, they're not going to move. They've just been plonked onto the map and they'll exist for a minute. So after you haven't broadcast for one minute, you disappear. Okay, but you can see we can go move these labels around. We can go zoom in. We can click on them and find out who they are. It's great, isn't it? So this gives you basically a live map of people that are running transmitter. Okay, and again, we can just go and play with the the tiles we can play with the grids the table any of these people we could go click on them and it will take us straight to them so that is transmitter and its new radar view it's completely free to use so you can go and jump into the simulator and you can run transmitter alongside your simulator and it will broadcast your position up to whichever server you are using. So out of the box, it comes with the Virtual Flight Online transmitter server. But there's nothing to stop you going online and getting a copy of it yourself and installing it for your own community if you want it. So if you want your own server, and that's where this PIN number comes in. So you, on the server software, you can set a PIN number. So only people that know the PIN number can actually communicate with your server. Okay, so if there was a pin number for my server, I can put it in the box and I can connect. And as long as it matches, then I will be broadcasting to that server. So it's just a way if somebody wants to have a private community, they can do that. Okay, I don't bother with it myself for the, the public version of Transmitter, but there are communities out there that are already using Transmitter that do use that. It just stops them from having clutter on their radar screen, for example. So it's only their own flight that's using it. Okay, so there we go. That was Virtual Flight Online Transmitter. So if you go to transmitter.virtualflight.online, you can get the free download and you can start broadcasting from the simulator and you'll see yourself on the map. You can also go to the user guide, which is at virtualflight.online as well. It's within their, their main website and you can see everything about it. So how to install it, the status display, the radar display, how to integrate it with little nav maps step by step, and some notes at the end about how it works. Okay, so hopefully that's been of interest to you, and I look forward to seeing your aeroplanes appearing on the map over the next days and weeks ahead. I think I'm going to leave it there. So that's Transmitter from Virtual Flight Online. So this is kind of my way of paying it back to the flight simulation community, of giving something back, because I take so much from this community. I think it's high time that I gave something back. Okay, I'll see you again soon. Take care.